Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of match day three in the Champions League. Um, yes, I'm wearing Ajax for the second time in three match day review videos. But to be honest, they are simply brilliant at the moment. I mean, I have so much fun watching Ajax uh, that this to me is almost a headline. It was not the best game, but I think... And you may disagree, but I think that whatever Ajax showed against Dortmund, this was the most impressive performance. That 4-0 was flattering for Dortmund. That says it all. They completely outplayed a very good Bundesliga team. And maybe uh, their lofty standing in the ratings is not all that much of a fluke. Although I have been saying in the Dutch league of the last few weeks, it didn't look that good. And then they let all lose on Dortmund and yeah we can look forward on the weekend when they play PSV and I think this will overlap with the Classico a little bit and I'm not sure if I shouldn't watch the Klassiker uh, rather than the Classico. Uh, I also have to say uh, the Tuesday's actions was definitely more entertaining than Wednesday's action. Uh, Tuesday you could not stop. I mean, almost every game had a big store, a big storyline. The better games aren't Tuesday. I have, I have to say, in general, groups A to D are a bit above groups um, E to H uh, in in a way. Although there was, I think, a few interesting uh, matches yesterday. Of course, a few interesting ma 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 matches and major comeback uh, as well. So yeah. I would say we'll dive right right into it. I want to go through um, through it match by match. Um, before I do that, though, um, again, I looked what's the biggest percent uh, percentual change in uh, the chances of advancing. And it's a very Portuguese thing. I mean, this up there looks more Europa League and Champions League, but then you get a little bit more Champions League flavor in the other jerseys. But yes. Sporting and Porto had the biggest boosts in advancing. However, their chances were already quite small. But this is now the theme that we will be getting because many of the big teams, and you will see this in the stats cast if you want to see the raw numbers, many of the big teams have already a very established chance of advancing. And so uh, with a win, Porto and uh, Sporting could ac actually more than double their chances of advancing while still being kind of a little bit uh, on the smallish side but yeah those are the winners sporting porto and Villarreal. <laughs> you. okay let's run through the games i mean the, i actually was a little bit excited for the tuesday no nah, not really for the, for the tuesday early games but you know club rouge against the city seemed like club rouge has been scoring they have given psg some trouble no they had no chance against man man man, man just it took a little bit once Cancelo broke the dead, the deadlock, the flood gets open. Mares added, added a few more. Uh, Carl Walker even got one. So it was all the uh, <laughs> the the wingers in a way. Fullbacks. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Palmer got one. I mean, he, uh, Guardiola cool. Could, could even change. I mean, Van Aken pulled. Pulled back back and then Riyad Mares emphatically gets a, few, a fifth one. And man, Manchester City are very well back on track. Um, a very entertaining game was Besiktas against Sporting um, that actually got a little bit out of whack late, late on, but uh, early on there were chances on both sides uh, with Guatesh um, scoring the first two goals for Sporting and Larin getting an equalizer for Besiktas. Um, Sarabia makes it three, then a goal for Besiktas was uh, the disallowed. Overall, it was a rather uh, unfortunate uh, run of uh, play for um Besiktas and Sporting Indian. I mean, they had a few chance, a, a few chances to to even uh, secure the win sooner. But then watch the Paulinho goal. How he just nonchalantly out of the box puts it. Uh, it's it's just it's great, great, great stuff. Um, a great game was also Leipzig at PSG, but it was all Leipzig. However, PSG won that one very sim sim similar to the uh, win against City. It is really that the superstars, kind of their individual brilliance, a few flashes can destroy a, a team that is playing very, very well. However, going forward, you really have to worry about PSG because, again, the team seemed a little bit disjointed. Leipzig took Verratti out of the game, who was battling hard. Um... And thus, the supply line to Messi and Mbappe was 
gone and uh, PSG had a really really hard struggle there um, they get the, PSG gets the first goal uh, but it has it has there was a little foul of Messi uh, on the other side before uh, it's gone but it was a typical Mbappé finish um, but then it was all oh, Leipzig Leipzig completely dominated and this is a lie Leipzig has been rather anemic throughout the entire uh, group stage so far Andre Silva gets an equalizer, then Mukiela uh, um, puts P uh, Leipzig ahead, both are really nicely assisted by Angelino. Um, and then uh, you really thought that, Le that Leipzig is going to now kill that game. However, uh, Adams, I think, loses the ball, it goes to Mbappé, who, who then nicely assists uh, Messi, who takes a shot, goes to the... Uh, to the upright and then he puts it over the line easiest goal almost that Messi will ever score but I think it would have gone in either way he just wanted, wanted, wanted to make sure and this is exactly what happens if you lose the ball and you give those two up front and I actually think Mbappé and Messi is probably even better than if you would have uh, for instance uh, Neymar in there I think as nice as it is to have the, all three stars out there, I think you only should ever play two of them and have the other, the third one come in and have then a Julian Draxler, who is a little bit of a better work rate, uh, kind of more balanced the team. And then they get a penalty that Mbappé surely wanted. I mean, yes, he's being pushed back, but he makes a whole lot of out of it. And uh, he then points immediately to Messi. You're going to take this one. And Messi takes it and Panenka's it in. 3 to PSG and I think uh, they really don't, I don't know how that happened uh, and then Mbappé he misses a clearer penalty um, in stoppage time and I thought then yeah you missed this one and now Leipzig is going to equalize, no PSG hang on and look pretty and may I say just one thing, I mean no I, I want to focus on, on the games here but I have been very critical of the PSG look over, over because it's a Chicago Bulls style look, but those numbers are just perfect. I have to say, this 30 Messi on this uh, blue PSG shirt with this uh, Chicago Bulls stream, oh boy, this is a great look. <laughs> I'm really getting around to that one, uh, to be honest. Um, best game of the evening was Atletico Madrid against Liverpool. Uh, and another one where I'm not sure that Liverpool know how they won it. I mean, after 15 minutes, it seemed like, yeah, they are cruising. Uh, because Salah uh, shows that he is in great, great form, gets the 1-0. And then Nabi Keita, how he smashes that one in. Great goal. Absolutely great, uh, great, great, great goal. And my wife is kind of saying, is Liverpool really that much better than, than Atleti? I said, yeah, this was not... I'm not... Uh, surprised by that result because Atleti have been rather bad in the Champions League this season and then they probably showed the performance and the crowd really got into it I mean that stadium uh, absolutely uh, enormous especially when 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 I got back back in the game Griezmann after a coca shot kind of deflects it enough and uh, Lemar made his best to get out of the way to pull one, one back and then Joao Felic has a moment of brilliance uh, dribbles past a few, gets the ball to Griezmann, who also really nicely takes it, and then pulls in at 2-2, and the stadium, I mean, jumping, I mean, uh, Pablo uh, Simeone, Diego Simeone, uh, clearly incited them again, as he's wont to do, but that was simply an awesome atmosphere, and at that point, you were fearing it for Liverpool, however, Griezmann had a moment of madness, where he just goes a little bit too far and puts his plants his foot into Firmino. I mean, he realizes then and uh, really apologizes. And I don't think it was uh, malicious in any, in any way. He just wanted to get the ball. However, yeah, I think the red card is uh, justified. And then, yeah, the uh, game is kind of, Klopp is really trying to kind of get uh, things evening out. Uh, but the game is kind of on the edge, even with 10 men. I thought Atleti was well in the game. Um, however, um, then a penalty is given. I think uh, who was the one who fouled? Cannot. Uh, uh, what was it? Hermoso. I'm not. I'm not one hundred sure. But there's a, a, a clear push, and a, so it's a penalty. Uh, that Salah and I love his run up. This is how you do a penalty run, or, or, or run up. Short, sweet, boom, in. I love this stuff. Uh, not this uh, Neymar esque whatever run, or, or, or run ups. Makes it three to Liverpool, um, but then exactly the same thing almost happened at the other side, where Diego Jota I think clearly pushes uh, the um, the Atleti player down. I don't know who who it was, and the penalty is given, 
and how this was then overturned, I have no idea. To me, there was a clear push there. To me, this was a penalty. Uh, this was kind of a fluke to me in many ways. But then I said, okay, maybe Atleti really got gifted the win at San Siro. Maybe this makes it a little, a little bit more even. However, uh, Milan are the clear lo losers there. As for Milan, yes, in, in injuries, but very anemic performance at Porto. Uh, I was looking forward to that game. I actually thought that Milan can do some, 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 some even with some injuries out. I know the Verona performance was not that encouraging, uh, especially the first half, but the second half I thought they were right, right high, but Porto uh, pressed them high and Milan could not cope. Milan could not cope and were lucky kind of to only lose 1-0. However, the 1-0 was a little bit contentious because there was a clear foul on Benazir just before that. And again, how the referee did not see that. I'm not quite seeing it. To me, uh, I see this Milan season a little bit like the first Dortmund season in the Champions League under Klopp, where you have a very young team that can play excitingly, but overall still too green to uh, be on the good stage. Although they were at least against uh, Liverpool, they were hanging on against uh, Atleti. I thought they were the better team. Against Porto, yeah. And Porto is a team that Milan historically has never a good rec record against. Um, Ajax, I, I said it already in the build-up. I mean, Ajax, this was flattering to Dortmund. They completely played Dortmund off the park and playing brilliantly at the same time. Uh, the four goals, Royce uh, and Ongo, I mean, it was Tade Trigger that Royce slice life flexed and Done, done, I blame with a great uh, build up, just yanks it in. He's only second European goal ever. Uh, Anthony uh, with a dummy, smash mess in, and then Sebastian Alia with a header. Where I think, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe a little, a little bit of a shove, but this, uh, you know, self confidence of I'm gonna just touch this and this goal goes in. And it could have been more. I mean, Grafenberg with a. Um, uh, free kick, I think, hit the post. Yes, we gotta say there were two Holland chances and one went on onto the bar because the goalie kind of got a tap on it, uh, which would have, would, have, would, have, would have been typically that, of course, uh, they can't concede. But other than that, this would not. 4 1 would not have been a just scoreline. I think if this ends 5 or 6 0, Ajax were that good. And yes, this Dortmund team has tr uh, troubles defense defensively and we should not overjudge and probably Ajax has a rather um, generous group to them. But still, I mean, uh, this Dortmund, uh, Dortmund team usually gets played off the park by Bayern. Rather impressive. I was really, 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 really impressed. A little bit less impressed by Inter, um, who took the lead through Jacob and Sebastian Till with another great goal. I think a free kick. Gets an equalizer for Sheriff, but then uh, Vidal and De Frey quickly turned the game to Inter. It was a much needed win for Inter. They were wearing the third shirt, so I'm took, uh, pulling the, what well, I think, a much better third shirt uh, back there for them. And uh, Real Madrid also didn't have many, many uh, troubles with Schachter for a change. Last season they lost twice to Schachter, but this time, yeah, uh, it took a while, but Christ, uh, Christoph, uh, Christoph, Christoph, um, Scores an own goal and then everything opens up. Vinicius Jr. scores two, one, one of these a slalom run where it really, if like skiing, the Schachter defenders were like the gates and he's just running, turning a uh, great goal. Of course, uh, Rodrigo and Bonsema had to get in on the action as well. And so it looks, uh, things look rosy for Real Madrid now after losing to Sheriff. They're still the class of this group and Inter. I think if they beat Sheriff again, I think uh, this will settle those two. On to the Wednesday games. Maybe, maybe I can talk a little bit less about them. Barcelona, Dynamo, Kiev. I was actually a little bit looking forward to it because it was this do or die game. But uh, Barcelona first wasting chances. Then Piquet get, gets a goal. Then Ansu Fati wants to score a world. World game misses big and forgets all about the players around it. Dynamo, Kiev not, not, not showing up. Barcelona getting a much needed win without being glamorous at all. And yes... I kind of like those jerseys. Salzburg, um, yeah, this is a little bit, I, I don't know, especially the first, the first I mean, Salzburg started with a whole lot, lot of power. And if you watch the first goal, how uh, the Yemo just uh, snatches the ball uh, in front of Mbabu and then runs to goal and gets it. 
great stuff for Sal, for, for Salzburg. Then Okafor hits the crossbar. But then Wolfsburg fought themselves back into, into the game. Get an equalizer and had even a big chance. Yeah, Salzburg may, 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 could, could have taken the lead in the first half too. But the first half was rather even. Nothing like that in the second half. Wolfsburg just did not show up. And it reminded me of Van Bommel, who was PSV coach when Lask beat them 4-1. Where they had a lead at the halftime and then Lask just with the second half completely rolled over them. And I think something similar happened to him now at Wolfsburg. Well, Salzburg then completely outclassed Wolfsburg in the second half. Uh, they seem to be surprising the, the class of this group. The question is how long will uh, the game stay? Okafor getting two more. And yeah, I think this was a deserved win for Salzburg. Bayern um, did a reverse from the weekend. Uh, first half, so and so. Befica was kind of in there. A Lewandowski goal was then ruled out for a handball, which was pretty clear. A Müller goal was in the second half was disallowed for offside at the time where I think Benfica actually could have taken the lead at some time. But then once Lira Sané with a great free kick uh, scores, the floodgates open and Bayern is just ro rolling over. Uh, Gnabry kind of sh shoots it onto Everton uh, to make it 2-0 and Lewandowski and Sané uh, score the other two, two goals and Bayern, yeah. Doing actually a favor to Barcelona because now goal difference will actually, if it would ever come into play, would actually now favor Barcelona over Bayern because Bayern only won 3 0 at um, Barca. But yeah, Bayern, the class of, of, of this group. Probably the most exciting game uh, of the evening was United against Atalanta, where uh, clearly two halves of uh, from United, especially, uh, where yeah, they had their chances and uh, but they did not take them at Atalanta, despite having injuries. Just said, yeah, we're going to play how we all always play. And in the 15th, Sapakosta assists uh, Pajalic, uh, makes it one one win. And then Demiral, who already was a little bit um, injured at, at that time after Kopmanas uh, cross heads it in, uh, make it 2-0. And you really think at that point, oh, Things are not looking good. I said it in my Premier League re review. The Atalanta game is probably the easiest to win for for United. However, you know, uh, as the injuries pile on, Atalanta still go for, for forward, but United found another another step. Uh, and when Rashford put it in, the crowd came into play and kind of lifted United uh, over Atalanta. Um, uh, Maguire gets the equalizer in the 75. At that point, I actually thought. That yeah, it's only only a matter of time as that they turn it around again like they did against Villarreal, and yeah, Ronaldo had had it in uh, to give United uh, the win. However, in the 80, in the eighty first, however, it also got to be said that Atalanta still had cha had chances, especially at uh, um, two one uh, to make it three and even thereafter. So uh, it was kind of an even game, but a huge win for United to be honest, because if they would have lost, they would have been bottom of the group, and now they're looking actually quite pretty, and you one has to worry a little bit of Atalanta. Um, Villarreal, it was weird to see them playing red, to be honest, but I understand that this was the only color, but red for Villarreal, not a color that I <laughs> support, let's put it that way. Uh, clinically, in the first half, Pino and Moreno giving them, uh, already after 60 minutes, a 2-0 uh, lead, then uh, young boys got back into the game, get a uh, deserved um, goal through Elia and you just when the when, 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 when pushing VRL runs to Kaka, contacts to two Moreno and Chukwese and runs away 4-1 winners. I think this could be a very vital win for them because now if they win the other one, I think VRL is kind of in the driving seat uh, to move on uh, um, at, and I think at the expense of Atalanta, not, not necessarily of United, but uh, gotta see. Not much I can say between Lille and uh, Sevilla, uh, boring game. Chelsea, I mean, uh, totally expected that they uh, will roll over Mal Malmö. Maybe the only thing to note there is that Lukaku and Werner both came off with injuries. However, at that time it was already 2-0 Christensen in the Jorginho penalty. The penalty, I think the foul kind of, kind of got then Lukaku out of the play. Uh, and in the second half, I think Jorginho with another one at Harvard's. Uh, yeah, the third one was by Harvard's. It was nicely played. Hudson Doe assist and Chelsea having no trouble with Malmö and Juve also with a rather effective performance. The late uh, a late header by Kulusevski gives them the win. So yeah, again around the 20, 20 minute review video. But I have to say um, Tuesday awesome. 
and the Wednesday so uh, so and so uh, I could afford uh, even chatting <laughs> and and still getting a hold of most of the action so uh, that kind of tells you how the Wednesday went next week uh, or two weeks it will be the other way around that we first have the groups E and H and then A through D any case uh, let me know what you thought about the games and you know uh, fill me in if you feel there's something more to add. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you can update it whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.